so what Circa is, is it's, it's the best way to stay on top of the things that are going on in your world. We make it really easy to get through all of the big news stories by breaking them down into their core elements, the facts, the stats, the quotes, the things that you need to really understand what's going on with the news stories. And then we have this awesome twist where for any story that you actually care about and you want to learn more of over time, you just hit this follow button. You're effectively subscribing to that individual story so that as the details come out in that story, will continually update you. And so when you come back and read, you're only reading the things that you haven't seen yet. It's a really, really beautiful way of being able to stay on top of the news. We're a mobile first company. It's been something that we were really completely born out of. We never really did any sort of web ideas even in the very beginning. How this came about was that we looked around at the entire news landscape. We saw all of the options that existed out there. I found myself in a coffee shop one day standing in line reading a thousand word article about something that was going on in the news and realized that's really inefficient. We don't have this behavior anymore where we sit down with a newspaper for 30 minutes, drink our coffee, read, digest. It, it doesn't happen anymore. We have three minutes while we're waiting for coffee. So why is it that the experience wasn't tailored for that. And so I looked at examples of other industries, of other projects that were out there that by focusing on mobile, uh, that the experience was really much improved. So why did Instagram take off where Flickr did not in the mobile environment? And it's because they focused on the, the size of the screen, they focused on the experience. It's one picture, very simple, single stream, as opposed to having so many options and so many different things that you can consume, which would be the Flickr example. So could we build the Instagram of news for mobile? And so all we did was we focused on the format very specifically. So it's not an article anymore, but rather these, I think, bullet points, clip notes, whatever. And then our writers know that they're writing for a mobile audience. They come in there with the intent that this needs to be on mobile. So it definitely shifts the, the thinking. Our whole motto is save time, stay informed. And right there is everything that we stand for. It's the idea that we want to make sure that people are informed in their world, but at the same time, we don't want to waste their time with superfluous information, with you know, link baity headlines, things that respect their time. And that's really what it comes down to, is understanding that we're all moving about this world. We have so many things that we're doing, but it's about the respect of that reader's time. We think so deeply about ethics, about uh, making sure that our readers have correct information, have factual content, and we've built it into the culture of the company in a number of different ways. One, we actually publish our, uh, all of our guidelines. Our editorial guidelines are available online for anybody that wants to read them, including the specific change log. So as we adapt and change that thing, you know, as, for instance, companies do with terms of service all the time, we're calling out the individual things that change over time. So it really does help our reader, if they choose to get that deep with it, understand at a very granular level what drives us as a company. But there's one other thing that we do, which I think mattered a lot, which is as our writers are actually writing this news, in our backend platform where we write everything, we require that they cite every single source right there uh, next to every paragraph. And what that means is, a, transparency for readers. So as a reader, I can know the source information, where it came from for every little detail that's a part of the story. But on the other side, it means that internally, we have good checks and balances in place where if we find out that something was just flat out wrong, we have a source that we can go back to and understand why it was wrong. So it's just part, uh, it, it's about building that into the culture of the company. Transitioning from where I grew up in the Midwest and spent 22 years of my life, to anywhere else really, to a place where there's a lot of drive, a lot of uh, you know, desire to build big, bold ideas, you know, it really comes down to one's tolerance for risk. Because places like the Midwest, which I love dearly and, and hope to be um, you know, always there in different ways of my life, I think that it matters so much that you understand that these are not inherently risk-taking places. A lot of times life is very comfortable. You know, you, you kind of have the job that you have for a long time, and it's just kind of how it's been. But if you understand that to get somewhere in the world, risk needs to be taken, 
then you can begin to frame every decision around, well, uh, you, you know, you think, okay, this is, this is a risky decision, but the potential reward far outweighs the, the potential detriments. And so in my life, in my career, you know, I grew up in a thousand person town in the middle of cornfields in the absolute middle of nowhere and, you know, did not have much uh, connection to this world at all, if any. But over time, I just realized there are such big opportunities out there you just have to take it a day at a time, understand the risks in front of you, take the right ones, and just keep pushing forward. There are a lot of different kinds of risks. There are a lot of different opportunities that are in front of entrepreneurs where they may take one decision versus another. But I think the, the thing that keeps me driving forward, the thing that keeps me in line with all of the ideas that I actually want to accomplish is very simple, which is that you have to be solving problems. They have to the solutions that you come up with can't just be, oh, I built you know X for Y. It has to have solved a fundamental problem uh, to to really succeed. There are very few businesses out there that were developed with no real problem at hand. In the case of Circa, and in the case of all of my previous uh, startups, I looked at it and I said something about this is broken. Here's a solution that I think will work. Here is my version of this answer. And so you, you come at it from, here's a problem, here's my potential answer, here's the solution that I will provide. And then finally, you have to have the conviction that you are the only person in the world to get that done. That if it wasn't for you, that that one thing, that one solution that you came up with, that that question might not get solved, that problem might not get solved, unless you are the one to do it. Mm -hmm.